Praise the Lord. It's good to see everyone in the house of God this evening. I invite all of you to stand just for a couple moments. I promise I won't keep you too long. We're going to read the word of God from 2 Peter chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people are you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. The day, that day will bring about the destruction of the heaven and heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heavens and new earth, where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of this matter. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people disorder, as they do the other scripture to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. First of all, we want to welcome each and everyone this evening here in the house of God. It's a great privilege to be here. And always, we have to thank God and we have to give Him the glory for this opportunity that He gave us to be again here in His presence. So we read uh, this uh, passage from Second Peter chapter 3 that speaks about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we know that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ will happen soon. And we are instructed by the Word of God to prepare ourselves for that day. Does anyone want to be prepared for the day that the Lord is coming? Is anybody here that wants to be ready when he's coming? We don't know the day, we don't know when he's going to come, but we surely know that in one day he will return. And for that reason, the Word of God instructs us and, and, and teaches us to get ready and be prepared all the time for his coming, because this is a very important aspect. He is going to bring about the glorious day of redemption, giving all believers the wonderful privilege to living with him forever and ever. What a great promise we have. As we're waiting for the, for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the believer must do and must prepare themselves for the coming. And there is a few things that I'm going to mention tonight from this word of God what we should do, and how we should prepare for that day. And number one, in verse 11, we, we, we read that, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people are you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. So the first thing that we, have to, that we have to do is we have to live, we must live holy and godly lives. In fact, note the scripture, all of our behavior must be holy and godly. There is to be no area in our life, no part, no act that is not holy and godly. Holy means that our behavior is sanctified, that is set apart into God, separated from the world 
and given over to God, given over to live pure and righteous life. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45, we see here when the Lord spoke to the people of Israel. And he says this, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. So it's very important for every believer to set himself apart and live a holy life. Because we serve a holy God, and He is holy. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Apostle Paul continued to say, "Since we have this promise, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence of God." Believers must make a clean break with every form of ungodliness and compromise, and continually. We have to resist the sinful deeds, hate them, and depart from them. This is very important, because in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14, the Word of God says, Make every effort to live in peace with every man, and behold, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Do you see how important is holiness in a believer's life? We see this in Scripture. So for that reason, every believer must set himself apart to live a holy life. We know that we we can't live a holy life on, on our own strength. But the Holy Spirit will help us when we open ourselves to the Lord and we invite Him to help us. We, we, we start to develop that, that uh, communion with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit. He will going to help us to live a holy life. Another aspect is godliness. Godliness means we live like God and seek to be godly person. Does anyone want to be a godly person? That we live and do all things in reverence and awe of God. So also we have to be we have to live in that way and to be conscious of God's presence all the time. His presence is everywhere. If you're going to look in uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Now we know this, that so many times we, we read this scripture, and many of you, I think, heard it for a lot of time, but there is a very important aspect in this word, because it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. The grace of God. How powerful it is when it teaches us to live, to live holy life and godly life. Because when the word of God promises and, and requests this from us, he empowers us to live this way. He gives us power and strength. And also verse 13 says this. While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. When we wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to decide, we have to make a decision to follow always the instruction of the word of God that leads us to do all the time something that pleases God always leads us on the path of righteousness. For that reason, we have to be in good connection with the word of God. This Bible needs to be, everyone should read this Bible and study it. And not only just read it and study it, but apply it to everyday life. In our life, everyone We'll see the presence of God manifesting when we follow the instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we look in, in, in these verses from 11 to 14, here is described the character and the purpose of God's saving grace. According to God's, to word of, to word of God, saving grace instructs the believer decisively reject the ungodly pa- pa- passion, pleasures, and values of the present age and regard them as abominable, unclean, reject them, depart from them. Another thing is, 
commands and empowers every believer to live upright and godly lives while we waiting expectantly for the blessed hope and appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another very important thing is verse 12 from this passage talks about the believer must look and speed up the day of the Lord. Have you ever thought, how can you do, what can you do to speed up the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? As you look forward to that day, God, to the day of God, we have to speed its coming. That will be, that will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will be melting heat. That's what the word of God says. The day of God refers to the day when God shall dissolve and destroy the heavens and earth. The day when the universe shall be set aflame by fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall be melted with a fervent heat. There are two questions here. What is to be the attitude of believer towards that day of God? And the second question is, how can we quicken the return, the return of Jesus Christ? Number one, by living a holy and more holy and godly lives so that more people will see the presence of God in our life. will see the character of God in our life in the way that we live. The more they see Christ in us, his presence and his power carrying us through the trial and temptation of life, the more they will desire. They wanted to find out and look after and, 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 and seek Christ. Because people in these days, it's looking for solution to so many things in their life. The more holy and godly we live, the more people will see the things for which they long for. And I'm going to mention just a few of them. When God's presence in your life, He will going to give you strength and con to conquer the trials and temptation that comes into your life. When God's presence in you is in your life, He will going to give you future and hope. Every single time, you will receive assurance and confidence of living forever. There are so many people in this world right now. They have no hope. They have no direction. They, have, they don't know nothing. And they need God in their life. They need someone who can help them and, and, and guide them towards the presence of God. Towards God who can change and transform their life. The presence of God brings conviction, purpose, and meaning, and significance in life. The presence of God brings love, joy, and peace. What a wonderful thing. It's, even if outside, it, 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 around you, it's storm, it's so many problems. It's the most powerful thing to have peace in your heart, to have joy in your heart, because the joy is connected with the presence of God, because joy comes from the Lord. And he is ready to, to, to share that, that, that joy with every believer. When people see these things in, 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 in your life, the things which they long for, they will be attracted to Christ much quicker. And the results will be, you are going to see the life of the people being changed. And more souls will going will to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And more souls and people will going to be added in the kingdom and to the kingdom of God. This is a great promise. Another very important thing is we have to testify. We must, believer must become witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what Jesus Christ says in Matthew 24 verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. The end will come only after the gospel of the kingdom has been preached in the entire world. This gospel of the kingdom refers to the apostolic gospel preached in the power and the righteousness of the Holy Spirit. And when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit manifests, there are some things that is going to happen. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. And also, they will place their hands on the sick people and they will be healed. What amazing promise is in manifestation of a presence of God in the kingdom of God. 
Jesus Christ has promised that his authority, his power, presence will accompany us when we battle Satan's kingdom. When we, we, don't, when we are not afraid about, about his, his, his work and his, his accusation and all kind of work that he tried to, to, to bring against the church and the people of God. We must liberate people and the presence of God in the life of the believer will manifest. And you will see when the Holy Spirit will bring deliverance, will bring salvation to, the, to, to everyone who needs. We all of us, all of us need salvation. All of us need God's help in everyday life. And also we have to set our heart and our life by living righteous life. May the Lord help us all. We pray that the Lord and the Holy Spirit will empower each and every believer in this day to live a holy life and to make himself and be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers, another very important thing is must prepare for the coming of Christ. Verse 14, so then dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at the peace with him. You see, everyone must be that is eager, earnest, zealous, and preparing himself for the return of Jesus Christ. We have to do our part. We have to do our part. Why is that so important? Because so that the Lord will find us prepared when he's come. We're going to know three preparations that are necessary. Number one, the believer must be found in peace. He must be at peace both with God and man. He must not be living in rebellion against God, nor be divided against his brother or sister. He must not be living like he wants. Instead, he has to live how God says is important to live. He must not do in his own things. He has to set his eyes and his heart towards Jesus Christ and follow him and, in, and all his instructions. He must not disobey God. He must not live in sin. And there is a lot of sin that we can, we can, we can describe here. He must not gossip and criticizing. He must not grumbling and backbiting, stirring up troubles within family, friends. He must be at peace with everyone. He must not neglect God and his word. The believer must be at peace with God and with men every day of our life. We cannot let trouble from outside to trouble us, to bring all kind of situation in between us. As a brothers and sister in Christ, we are brothers and sister. And for that reason, we are called to live in peace with each other. And also, we have to be in peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, the Word of God says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 says, Apostle Paul continued to say, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that may, no, may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united. This is important. And another very important thing is the believer must be without spot. That's what the Word of God says in verse 14. This means to be clean and pure. The believer is to confess his sins always. He is to be walking in constant communion and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Walking in open confession, confessing all the sin and contamination that he picks up from the world. Just being in the Word means that someone... That some of the pollution of sin catches our eyes or our ears of the believer and causes unclean thoughts to cross our mind. We have to confess quick every single sin. We cannot let any day to pass by so easily, so quick. Just look into your life. Stay before the Lord. Stay in the presence of God. Invite Him to help you. Invite Him to cleanse you. And the blood of Jesus Christ will do that. Will cleanse every single one. The believer must walk in open confession, praying always 
for the power of Christ's blood to cleanse us and also to keep us pure. This is the only way believer can ever be found spotless by Christ when he returns. We read this in, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to clean us from all unrighteousness. You see how important is confession? Confess all your sins all the time and break with all kind of ungodliness and sinful desire, sinful passion, anything that the devil tried to bring into your mind, into your heart, or entangle you with all kind of things. Confess those things before the Lord because the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that shed on the cross for us will cleanse and purify us every single time when we come before the Lord. Another very important thing is the believer must be found blameless. Means, blameless means free from fault to be faultless above reproach and rebuke. The believer is to live blameless. And pure life is important, this one, both in the church and also in the world, everywhere. There are so many people that are trying in front of multitude, in front of people, you know, to look good. But we have to live a pure life everywhere, at, how, at, at our houses, with our friends, when we are with our friends, when we are at work, in the church, everywhere. We have to live in honesty before the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15 says, Do everything without complaining and arguing. Now we want to ask ourselves how many times we complain. How many times we end up in arguing with someone. Arguing with God sometimes. Why this is happening to me? Why so many trouble comes in my life? Instead of humbling ourselves and going before the Lord and asking Him to help us, to, set us, to, 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 to helping us and to set us free from, from the trap that a Satan every day is making towards you and towards, life, towards your life. And verse 15 says, So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation. Jesus, an apostle, emphasized that the world will live is a sinful generation. The people of the world holds wrong views, have wrapped values, follow immoral ways in life, and rejects the norms of God's word. God's children must separate themselves from the worldly lifestyle and sin. And they have to be blameless and pure without fault in order to proclaim Christ's glorious redemption to the world that is lost in sin. This is a very important thing. Another very important aspect is that believer must realize that the Lord's patience with us results in salvation. Verse 15, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our brother Paul also wrote to you, with the wisdom that God gave him. Remember one thing. Scoffers brings all kind of words, all kind of teachings about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. They say that such thing is foolishness. They say that the world is op operated and run by the natural law of nature. They say that if God existed and cared for the people and for the world, he would have come along ago and saved the world from all kind of evil, corruption, things that are happening in this, in this world were and, uh, and, and that so many murders and, and, and that's happening right now in this world. But we have to remember one thing. What the scripture says that why it is that Jesus Christ has not yet come. Because God is long-suffering. And those, and he does not want anyone to perish. He does not want anyone to perish. This is, a, this is an important thing. This truth does not mean that all will be saved. 
For if a person rejects God's grace and salvation, he or she remain lost. It is our choice to accept his salvation. It's our choice to accept him and let him to be our Lord and King. And set your heart to obey him. This is one thing that we have to decide to do. Today we see so many people. They don't want God to be their Lord. Because they say probably God is so strict. God is not that. If God tells you don't do these sinful things that you are doing. He will instruct you to do something better. And you will find out that. But God says it's better. It really is better. Sin brings nothing, just harm people. Sin brings death, sickness, all kind of stuff in people's life. But when God comes in, in your life, and He is your Lord and King and Savior, He will transform you, and He is ready to give you life, health, and abundant life. What a promise we have from our Lord. Are we ready to live? Are we ready to accept Him and let Him to guide and lead us? Are we ready to set, to put our life to the feet, our, to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ and let Him to be our King and Savior? We want Him to lead us. We want Him to be our Lord and King. Remember what He said to the people of Israel in Leviticus chapter 11. Behold, I am your God. Be holy because I am holy. Now, if you tonight you feel that there are some things that, that it's not clean in your life, it's not holy in your life, you have a promise. The blood of Jesus can sanctify you, can transform you, and can make you a new person tonight. Because the blood of Jesus has power to transform the blood of Jesus has power to wash and clean every heart, no matter what, what happened in the past. He is ready to restore every soul, no matter what. If you're too, you think you're too old, you're not too old. Every day is the day when, when God gave it to you. And every day, God is calling us to come more towards Him. This is important for all of us. Every person and every believer must understand that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's, it's, it's very soon. And because of that, today we are here. We can make a choice to change our life. We can make a choice to follow Him. We can make a choice to accept Him, to let Him to be our Lord and King. Do we want that? Do we want him to be our Lord and King? Because in the time, it's coming the time when the believer must be aware lest they will be led in error. That's what the verse 17 says. And Jesus Christ warned the disciples when he said in Matthew 24, 9 to 13, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will, be hate, you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness and the love of most will grow cold. Gee, these, these words is spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why today we have to make that decision for our, for our own benefit, for our own salvation. Because the time is coming, as the verse 13 in Matthew 24 says, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. <clears throat> Trials, war, so many famine, so many things will come in this world and they are coming already. And these days are near. What kind of people we should be in these days? Preparing ourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not wasting any more time in sin. And away from God. <coughs> 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 
That's one very important thing that the Apostle and the Lord Jesus Christ directs us. Verse 18. Believers must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And underline the word, must grow. We must grow. So many believers today, they always face this. <clears throat> they have challenge to make a decision. Do I want to follow Jesus? Do I want to give my life to Jesus? But the word instructs that we must grow. Who is growing in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ? Those who already gave their life to Christ. Because the days that are coming, it's going to be so much trial in this world. And so many things will going to happen. And I don't want those days to, pre to catch us unprepared. Because for so many, we'll be late. That's why He gave us another day today. Every day when we wake up, when I wake up, I thank God that He gave me another day and I repent more and I have to come near and closer to Him, growing in knowledge, asking Him, clean me, purify me, change, transform me. I'm not perfect, but I rely on Your power. I rely on Your grace that has been given. But the grace, it's given for us to grow in Christ daily, Till the image of Christ will be perfected in our life and everyone around us will see the presence of Jesus Christ in our life. Is anyone here tonight that wanted to make the decision to let the Lord Jesus Christ to be His Lord and King? Is anyone here tonight who wants to grow in the knowledge to come closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you say, well, I wish I could, I, could, I, I could do that decision, but I feel I am sick. I have some problems. I have this. I want to tell you, our Lord Jesus Christ, He can heal you. He can solve any problem. This is, this is very important. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ with all your problems, and you, He will set you free, and you will be a free person. When you come in the presence of Jesus, from the presence of the Lord, you will be a different person. You will go different. But remember, when Jesus heals you, when Jesus restores you, when Jesus forgives you, He's stretching out His hand to you. And now He's calling you and He says that, come, follow me. Because I will show you the direction. I will show you the path. I will give you I will instruct you, be ready to listen, because you will, be, you will rejoice, you will be filled of jo full with joy if you listen to the Lord. Let's all stand in the presence of our Lord. And, and I wanted to, while the worship team were going to sing, I wanted to give the opportunity to everyone who wants to give their life to Christ, who wants to make a decision, who wants to make a change in their life, you can come up front here and we're going to pray together. The pastor, we're going to pray together. If there is anyone here that wants to receive a touch from the Lord Jesus Christ, if there is anyone here that feels oppression from the devil, Jesus can break every chain today and set you free. Jesus can heal you, can restore you. Jesus can open a way for you, a new direction. He's ready to do that for you. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come here and we're going to continue to pray together while the worship team will sing. Amen.